Hello, and on the Cult Zone today, this is Nicholas Courtney, famous for playing Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge-Stewart in Doctor Who. Welcome to the Cult Zone, Nick. Thank you. Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge-Stewart wasn't your first role in Doctor Who, was it? No, it wasn't. My first role in Doctor Who was Brett Byam in the Dalek Master Plan. And was that with... That was with William Hart. You had the first Doctor. So you've worked with all the Doctors? Indeed I have, except um, Paul McGann. Paul McGann. Something you want to rectify in the future, yeah? <laughs> Lap of the gods, isn't it, really? <laughs> mm, I guess I wouldn't mind. Um, getting back to the genesis of um, Unit and the Brigadier, mm. um, how did that all come about? Well, that all came about because in the Web of Fear, when I was Colonel Lethbridge Stewart, <clears throat> they, Douglas Campfield, who directed it, and Peter Bryant, who was the producer at the time, uh, asked me afterwards, for some reason, you know, I was quite surprised, uh, they said, Nick, would you like to. Uh, Patron's leaving and John Pertwee's taking him. Would you like uh, an idea? Uh, they said, would you like a two-year contract? Well, I said, you bet I would. <laughs> because, you know, my daughter had just been born and yeah. could do with a couple of years' security. <laughs> and so I said, yes, 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 yes. And I was, was intrigued because, having been a private when I was in the army, uh, uh, I said, it's terrific, 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 terrific. And I, you know, I thought, well, what is this? Where did I learn this from? Well, it's true that my dad was an army officer in real life fought the First World War, then he became a diplomat. And it's true, when I was in the army, I did get a chance to observe those officers, the officers you would follow into battle. And the chinless wonders, I used to call them, with massive private incomes and not much idea about anything, the sort of officers you wouldn't follow anywhere, into a jungle or anywhere else. So, uh, anyway, after this, uh, they then did um, the invasion of the Cybermen story. And that was a sort of dummy run to see if the whole idea was going to work, and presumably it did, because then I got off of this two year contract. Then, of course, I was promoting that story to Brigadier. Pat Tran comes and says, Hello, you know, Colonel Kell, how nice to see you. I said, Brigadier, actually, now. Okay. <laughs> and that's how the whole thing developed. And then, of course, because the Doctor was going to be on Earth, and they had this idea of unit and um, Earth stories, which worked pretty well, actually, I think. Cause, and they were good stories. It's like a predecessor to the X Files, the first uh, series. Ah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I believe in Spearhead from Space. Someone's telling me that one of the scenes I have in my office, apparently, there's something about says which says the X Files. Now I didn't know that, oh, and that is someone is very yeah. observant. Mm. You know, in this first scene I have with the Caroline John, mm. and suddenly this Brother Briggs office there's this thing, file, and some, it says the X Files. It's long before the X Files. Of, of all the stories that you did do, mm. I mean, Unit was a regular in Doctor Who for three, four years. What was your favourite story of the lot? Inferno. Inferno. Because it gave me the chance to play two, it was again directed by Douglas Campbell, a very good yarn, full of a terrific cast on other part of the regulars. And directed a wonderful pace by Douglas Campbell. And for me personally, it gave me the chance to play two aspects, the evil brigade leader, the fascist, who I based on Mussolini rather than Hitler, because like most bullies, Usually they're cowards 99% of the mm. time. And it always seemed to me that Mussolini had that braggadocio, show, you know, bully, bully, bully. And, uh, and to play someone is wonderfully stretching and it's great fun playing nasty people. It really is. I've played a lot of them in my time. It was a good, a good lengthy story as well. It was a lengthy Lots story, seven parter, as I say, very well done. And actually, this um, thing, which I'm thinking because I'm writing this book at the moment, is a possible thing that I'm going to have for the cover of the book, because it is my favourite story, it's been mocked up in Inferno. Oh, yeah. This is your autobiography. Mm -hmm. And um, two aspects of the brigand, that's about me, roughly. Maybe it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that story was quite thought-provoking, because again, Doctor Who was ahead of its time, because oh, yeah. um, the ozone layer and uh, the yeah. well, greenhouse yeah. effect and things Absolutely. like that, you know? As in the Green Death, it got yeah. well ahead of its time. Exactly, yeah. foretold a lot of things. Oh, yes. I mean, that word ecology, that was long before politicians and uh, other people used it, you know, uh, ecology, ecology. Politicians, they all need to get votes, don't they? Anyway, <laughs> but I mean, there again, Doctor Who was ahead of its time. Yeah. So what was your favourite adversary in Doctor Who? Um, uh, well, when you say favourite, what do you mean by favourite? Well, which is the enemy that you like best? Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's one, a rubbish that's question. That's 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 <laughs> I, I think I know where you're going yeah. on this. I mean, I'll tell you who, the enemy who freaked me out most, because yes, I, I think it's very hard to love your enemy. I mean, I am a Christian, as it happens, but I mean, uh, do you mean that? I mean, yes, which yeah. is, well, indeed, it was the maggots in uh, Green Death. 
uh, because I've had a fear of creepy crawlies most of my life. I'm not over my fear of spiders. I've been writing about this recently. But at least in uh, Planet of the Spiders, I didn't have a spider on my back. Yeah. Brig managed to, otherwise the false moustache could have dropped off very quickly. <laughs> Stiff upper lip would have vanished. <laughs> you had a little creepy crawl in your lip, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Until I finally had the sense to grow a bio moustache. Would, would you have ever liked to have played the Doctor? No. Because I think I'd have been wrong casting for it. I think the basic thing, as Barry Latz has said, and I agree, that if you can take the analogy of Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Sherlock Holmes, the brig is Dr. Watts, mm. and your master is uh, Moriarty, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, I wouldn't have made a good doctor. I don't think I would. <laughs> what about dimensions and time? <laughs> dimensions and time. Uh, yeah, well, that was great. You see, because John J and T had um, wanted to make sure that I worked with all seven, six by then, and uh, that was very, very quick. And you know, Brig coming out of the helicopter, and uh, that was. Uh, it was a story about dimensions in time. I'll tell you when the helicopter and all that. Well. No one knew that I had vertigo and don't like heights very much. Now, in this helicopter, which flew, flew quite low over the Thames, there were no doors in this helicopter no. either side, because the camera had to get the actors. Yeah. I was strapped in the back. Stiff up and to the floor. Eventually. Oh, I can't wait for this, can't wait for this. Okay, then, then eventually. Then the cameraman got in, and he sat in the middle of the back, and he pushed me right to the edge with this open door. And this German cameraman said, so now you look down. Now you look down. And Mr. Percy, now you look down. He was nudging me with the camera. No, I fucking don't look down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought in my head, you better cut that, I suppose. That's all right. Um, <laughs> so, so I said, no, I don't. And uh, so then when I got to the ground, straight to the pub and five pints rabbit, yeah. <laughs>